Alright guys, uh, here we go uh, for another Cold Painting Table tutorial. Today we're taking a look at the Trader Guardsman out of the Blackstone Fortress. So we have a primed model black, and we're going to use uh, Scale 75's Anthracite Gray going over uh, primarily Zenithly, so looking for the top down here. Um, we're going to go back and retone all these blacks eventually anyways, but you can basically look anywhere it's supposed to be lighter uh, or light refracting off the or reflecting off of the armor. That's what we're hitting right now. Okay, and when that anthracite gray is all done, uh, we're going to be a little bit more selective now, uh, going with graphite, uh, still by scale 75, uh, as it's going across here. Um, it doesn't need to be as overpowering um, as the uh, uh, anthracite was, but we're just hitting just just major light points here. Again, uh, certain spots that will be brighter for the armor, even after we tone the black all back down. The Right on. Now that the uh, black is essentially done, we're going to go in with, the, uh, with a, a finer detail brush, um, or whatever kind of like, sharp pointed brush you need, and we're going to hit anything that needs to be metallic with scale 75 black metal. Okay, now that the black metal is all dry, uh, we're going to go and highlight all that uh, black metal uh, with thrash metal. And like, be selective now with where you're putting this. Think about top-down light. Um, so like on that big blade on his chest, I didn't highlight everything. I just looked at the top angle. When I'm hitting the, the gun here, I'm hitting the top of the barrel and the top of the clip. Um, we're going to hit the tops of the spikes on his back, um, not the entire blade, just places where, like again, the top-down light um, is going to be hitting here. Okay, and as our final metal highlight here, uh, being the most selective as we need, uh, we're going to use uh, Heavy Metal. And I love the metal names here, Black, Thrash, uh, Heavy, it's just the best. Um, and again here, um, guys, look more at the, the edges of things now, instead of just where the light would be hitting, uh, like top-down mentality. Um, so sort of like more like the, the points of the spikes on spec, the, the edges of blades, the edge of the teeth. Um, maybe a, a middle pieces of the chain mail, things like that. Fantastic. And with everything all dry, um, we're going to hit it the entire model with GW's non-oil uh, using the gloss variety here as well, um, because this is going to flow a little bit better than the ungloss variety. Uh, we will hit this with a matte coat once the wash is completely dry, um, just to make sure that we're not getting uh, affected by weird light reflections when we're painting the rest of the model. Okay, now that the blacks are, and metals are essentially done, we're going to start getting the fatigues going along here. Um, it's scale 75 Ardennes Green. Um, it goes on, at least for my bottles for whatever reason, fairly thin, so we're going to have to do a couple coats here. Um, 
This is a good base coat for any kind of like Astro Militarum stuff or like World War X, whatever <laughs> World War you want to paint as well. Um, if you're looking for like a nice base green for some camouflage or fatigues, that is. Okay, we make sure that the Ardennes green is nice and solid on the model, uh, and now we're going to go in, uh, I'm using a SOTAR 2020 Slim here as a fine detail airbrush, and I'm just highlighting that with Field Grey, again by Skill75. Um, it's basically the next step up. I didn't want to go too saturated with a green here, I wanted to keep things muted because still it is chaos, still it is kind of Imperial Guard-ish, I didn't want them to be vibrant like Goblin Skin. And as our final highlight, I'm actually going to mix together Field Grey and Skill 75's Nakar um, as a final highlight. Again, just thinking about like the edges of where things should be. Um, Skill 75, at least the pots that I have, had the chance to come out a little bit chunky at the beginning, so you can see a little bit of speckling there. But we can clean that up with a couple of washes and some white, uh, black lining. So as an alternate color here against the fatigues, we're going to use Skill 75's Arabic Shadow. Now note that this is a rather thin paint, so many, many thin coats to make sure we have a nice uh, beige-ish, more, I guess, desert yellow sort of color that we can work with. Right on. Uh, first highlight of this is going to be Sahara Yellow with uh, from Skill 75, um, and you may notice like I go back and forth between brushes and airbrushing fairly commonly. Um, I like to get base colors down with a brush so I can block out entire areas, and then the airbrushing just go in there and, and hit the highlights that I needed to. Right on, and now we can go back to GW's Talent in a Pot, uh, hitting all the um, green fatigues that we had earlier um, with the field gray and the Ardennes green with Athonian camo shade. And then we can go in with GW's liquid talent in a pot, Seraphim Sepia, on any of the um, pants and the alternate colors that we did. Sorry that I am off here, you guys aren't missing much, it's just me slapping down um, a shade on top of his pants. Right on. Um, here, we're going to take a start, start uh, like, like Basically, adding in more definition, blocking out more colors, we're going to use GW's Rhinox Hide for his boots, uh, and we're going to go across and, and hit anything else that we really need um, it to be as well. Uh, I am completely off frame here, and I apologize. Um, oh, there we go. Oh, there we go. Right on. So we're going to get the gun holster, um, uh, so any pouches across his body that we need uh, in this color. And let's go in there now, um, much like Bob Ross would have said, with a, a happy little brush to make a happy little bush, um, but just be off screen, uh, highlighting all these areas with Vallejo uh, Model Air Sand. Come on, Cody, there we go, right on. Um, so, boots, gun holster, etc., in sand. Now we're going to hit all those areas with the Avagrax Earth Shade Gloss now. Uh, I did the skulls as well. Um, it was just hit them with that sand color and then with white. Uh, and we're just going to slather this Avagrax Earth Shade on anything that we just um, highlighted up with uh, sand. Except for those skulls. Leave the skulls where they are. Alright, time for some fun smaller details. Uh, across these guys have like a lot of sashes or badges or scars covering their face. Um, so we're just layering down uh, scale 75 blood red. Again, reds, yellows, incredibly translucent paints here guys. Let's keep it nice and thin, hit it with a couple coats and you'll be much happier with the end result than just trying to layer on and slather on massive coats um, as we're going across this.
our first red highlight here is with Antares Red by Scale 75. Um, yeah, basically, just, just again, think about top down. Um, so we're not going to worry about the underside of what we were taking a look at, but we're hitting the tops of it. And you can see that it is a fairly vibrant red. Again, reds, translucent, they dry a little bit more see through than you want. So the cool thing here is that you can layer up the red in a lot of different ways um, to get better and more progressive highlights to the color that you're putting on. And I'm going to add on a little bit of Mars Orange into my wet palette where the red was uh, for another highlight here. I don't normally highlight with orange, but Mars Orange is a neat um, it's a neat color to go ahead and add into reds. Uh, I don't like shifting that far up uh, into yellow, but it's a good way that we can, it's a good color that we can feather into some final highlights um, just to make it pop a little bit more. And back to, to the liquid in a pot, um, we're going to just give all that red a wash of Caribou Crimson. Um, fun side note, um, once went on a, on a trip to Mexico to go see the band Hanson, and one of the, the, the band members was at like a, a ceramic thing, a uh, ceramic painting um, event. Uh, I painted up a like, little Captain America thing, and he's just like, yeah, I could have used a wash for that, it would have been better. Turns out he was a big uh, 40k player as well, so there's something you didn't know about the band Hanson. All right, now because this guy is the uh, the boss man of the squad, uh, time to start hitting some gold details. Uh, just scale 75 gold, uh, Viking gold in specific, uh, to start uh, base coating these guys out. Now, glory again to whatever kind of wet palette that you have. I'm just mixing together uh, some scale 75 speed metal um, in with that Viking gold. Uh, it's a very, very bright white uh, silver just to brighten up the gold and throw on some highlights. Okay, now this next part is taking a look at some of the wood grains. Uh, it is actually kind of cool that they put wood grain on these models. Um, completely off screen here, uh, and this is going to be the next couple shots to so go ahead and do this anyways. Um, but basically, we're taking a look at Vallejo Flat Earth and hitting any place that's like a wood section here. So, let me just start drawing in where it should be. I'm just drawing lines to create a almost wood grain effect. I believe it was Rhinox hide down as a base there, and then the flat earth, and here we're going to draw some very specific lines with the German camo beige, uh, World War II, uh, just to create more of a wood grain effect. It's, it's, it's 32 millimeter scale guys, so it's not going to be as uh, impressive as like a larger scale mini, but it'll give the effect. Okay, uh, grab an Irati green for scale 75, because I think grenade should be the brightest F-off greens that you can make uh, them, so that's what we're going to do. And we're going to highlight this with spring green from scale 75. Put the green on all... Oh, oh, wow. With the green all on, we'll go ahead and just shade it with BL10 green, uh, so GW's green... Uh, shade um, and that's going to be enough if you want more definition you could make two uh, washes out of it but we're going to go in with the lenses next with uh, adriatic blue because blue is a good spot color for a model like this and we go onward now to all of his skin uh, so much of it just being his hands i guess you could paint them as gloves as well it would make sense that in the 41st millennium you don't have any skin exposed, but in this case we're just going to go with Scale 75's Pink Flesh to toss on the base coat. With the base coat of Pink Flesh on, we're going to go with Scale 75's Golden Skin. Um, 
focusing more along like the knuckles. We're not trying to get all the way across the entire hand, but just the fingers and knuckles to make sure that we get a little bit of transition or uh, uh, shading there. For most nondescript Caucasian humans, or humanoids, um, Reichland Fleshlaid is my shade of choice, so we're just going to hit the hands with that. Okay guys, you can base your minis whatever way you want after this. Um, I think I went back with the skulls and maybe hit them with a coat of Null Oil, not gloss, but the actual just plain Null Oil. Uh, but we're going to take a little 360 of all the different guys of the squad. So you do get seven of these, um, uh, sorry, no, two of each of these types of um, guys within uh, the Blacksmith Fortress box. So I was trying to focus primarily on painting up the sergeant, um, but because I'm doing all of them anyways, might as well get them all done at the same time. You can see that some of them have fur. Um, the fur is done very similar to the Yannis Drake uh, tutorial. Um, anything that's bronze and coppery here is like the gold that's done on uh, the sergeant. Uh, but enjoy, as always guys, if you enjoyed this video, um, Please like, subscribe, share, uh, comment uh, on anything you guys want. Uh, I am just getting back into the swing of things here, so I can only hope that the um, videos are going to get better and better and better as we're going across. Uh, if you uh, have any suggestions or things that you want to see painted in the future, just let me know and we'll uh, get it going. Thanks a lot, guys, and have a good one. Uh, a few more models coming up here for you, though. Um, enjoy. Enjoy.